I'm in search of unique game mechanics because I often talk about the importance of having them, especially in an indie game. I'll play through four games, sometimes selected randomly or sent to me by the developers or suggested by you, the viewer. I'll rank each game on a scale from 1 to 10 in three categories. Originality, or the uniqueness of the main mechanic or combination of main mechanics. Implementation, because a unique game mechanic will depend a lot on how well you can integrate it into the game. And overall quality, because even if you have a cool mechanic, no one will care about it if your game just sucks. But that's how it works, so let's start with the first game. Death Slave was sent to me by the developer. This point A to B platformer involves dying to acquire new abilities. You can only have one ability at a time, and depending on how you die is which ability you possess. Although there are some cases where you can just die without getting any abilities, which kind of threw me off at first because it doesn't match the premise of the game. Acquiring temporary unique abilities based on some action you perform I can't say is super unique, but having the action be dying does add a little bit of originality. Although, by coincidence, I have reviewed a game with a similar idea in this series. However, both are dramatically different from each other, so I'll give an originality score of 5. While many of the puzzles and levels took great advantage of incorporating each ability as they are progressively revealed, as well as the need to change between abilities to continue. The mechanic of dying in order to change the abilities was underused, and most of the time unnecessary, resulting in many levels feeling tedious and repetitive, so I have to give it an implementation score of 4. Death Slave has an interesting structure and often thoughtful level design, but has a serious lack of polish. Many of the enemies and environment would glitch or behave unpredictably when a section was reset after death, which happens a lot because of the given mechanic. The controls were often unresponsive, and hitboxes were unpredictable at times, so sadly I can only give an overall score of 3. Next up is Hop Island, suggested in the comments on my last video in the series by the developer. This is a top-down keys and doors type of puzzle game, movement is dependent on a grid, but locked to every other tile, and screen wrapping is a thing. The most original mechanic in this game would be the every other tile based movement, earning the game its name. I honestly don't think I've ever seen that before. And I also feel I need to include the screen wrapping as a mechanic because even though it isn't a unique concept, I mean games have been doing screen wrapping for thousands of years now, it is a core mechanic as it is used in practically every level. So with that in mind, I give an originality score of 7. Each puzzle in Hop Island forces you to think outside the box, and makes use of either screen wrapping or tile hopping. A sign of a great puzzle mechanic being implemented well is when the mechanic becomes not only the means to a solution, but also presents the problem to overcome in the first place. The design of every level and all other elements in the game force the player to make use of the main mechanics, so an implementation score of 8 is well deserved. The menu, graphics, and UI failed to stay on theme. To be honest, I was confused what the game was about for quite a while. The music was very lackluster, and the game sort of crashed after I completed section 4, but otherwise the overall experience was mostly positive, with the level and puzzle design being exceptional, so Hop Island gets an overall score of 5. Return is a story about a boy trying to cope with the loss of his cat which had to be put down at the vet. There seemed to be no noticeable unique mechanic, as such I give the game a score of 0 in originality. And likewise, without a unique mechanic to incorporate into the game, by default it must get a 0 in implementation. While I'm sure there's an audience that enjoys interactive storytelling, and I can see how this particular title could be seen as a well-written work, Return cannot be classified as a game as it lacks an objective established by the medium or by the player, and it also lacks an obstacle to overcome in order to achieve said objective. However, because it's called a game by the developer, we will treat it as such fair and square, mainly to illustrate the fact that a game lacking a goal and an obstacle to overcome fails to live up to any reasonable definition of a game, so it must get an overall score of zero. Heinokin is a platformer where you try to reach a goal within a time limit, then upon reaching the goal you are given a sword and you must try and stop your past self from reaching the same goal. This idea of trying to achieve a goal then stop yourself from achieving that goal is extraordinarily interesting, and provides all sorts of potential for compelling interactions or strategies, so I give it an originality score of 8. Though the idea is interesting, the title fails to take full advantage of the concept, mainly due to the incredibly short timer preventing you from fully exploring different strategies and the seemingly random and unclear level design, which most of the time doesn't encourage planning ahead in your first life and the anticipation of fighting yourself in the second. So it gets a score of 3 in implementation. Heinokin had incredible music and visuals and an interesting design for progressing through the game, where as long as you complete one level in each row, you can move on to the next row until you complete at least one in each, but failure to win at least one level in a row will reset you to the start. While this design was interesting, the game felt unbalanced, especially on the timer, and the movement was loose and sloppy making what would be relatively easy platforming ridiculous and frustrating, so an overall score of 5 seems fair. If you have any suggestions for games you would like me to review, whether it's a game you've enjoyed or one you've made, I'd love to hear from you for future episodes. Otherwise, let me know if you think my assessments were fair in the comments. Thanks for watching, and have a beautiful day.